So I'm Nigel, and uh, we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about putting production into the cloud, all right? Um, I don't care how many followers I do or don't have on Twitter, right? But I do like talking about technology. Um, and you've seen my slide, I don't have the answers right. Um, quite often from conversations on Twitter, I get answers from people like you guys. So if you do things like Twitter, let's get connected, let's have some conversations, maybe I'll learn something. I co-host this the weekly podcast, the Intech We Trust podcast. We have beer mats, <laughs> I don't know. And we have stickers if you want them. That is like my um, crowning achievement of my life designing that logo, so please do take a sticker. Seriously though, right, um, it's a weekly podcast where we talk about infrastructure technology, stuff that's going on in the news, um, and it's a great way to keep up to date with what's new and what's going on. We just recorded a show on this table actually today talking about Amazon Web Services outage at the weekend and all that kind of stuff. So if you're into your tech, you want a good way to keep up to date with what's going on, tune into the podcast. Confession, right? I really don't have the answers. Um, but you know what? I don't think I'm cheating you in this, or I hope I'm not cheating you, right? Because I like interactivity. So if somebody's got a question, I've got a glamorous assistant at the front with a microphone. He's going to come and find you, ask the question. I won't know the answer. Somebody in the room probably will. We all learn, right? I like a bit of interactivity. We're here for networking. We're here for getting to know each other and the likes, right? Ah, I like stories, OK? And look at that. Does that look like a container ship to anybody? How cool is that, right? So I'm going to tell you some stories, three stories. Pigeon, right? So I started my IT career, I don't know, like 15 plus years ago. And probably like most people, right, I was uh, the guy that reset passwords, answered the help desk phone, and I had a job every morning, right? I had to go and change the backup tapes. So I'd log on. Um, it was ArcServe, I think, that we had at the time. I'd make sure that last night's backups were either green or yellow. Quite often they were yellow. Um, and I'd go into the computer room that we had on site. It was a room about this big, OK? And I'd change some, um, what were they? Uh, not S were they DLT tapes maybe back then? Pop the old tapes out, put them in a fireproof safe, put the new tapes in right. Had to do it every day. Um, so I go into the computer room one morning. We'd had a problem with the air conditioning unit, so we'd had to, we had windows quite big like this on one side of the room. We'd had to open the windows. And I'm, I don't know, I'm aware that there's something in the room that shouldn't be there. And I realize there's a pigeon in the computer room, right? I'm like, this is brilliant. So I pick up the phone in the room, call my colleague. Suddenly, the whole of the IT department descends on the room. And we're all trying to shoo this pigeon out, right? No word of a lie, right? It's shizering everywhere. It's on network cables. It's on the front of servers and stuff. Pigeon crap everywhere. And as we're trying to flap it out of the room, of course, it's flying into the glass. And we're like, no, you've got to fly lower. Nightmare, OK? Also, you know the, um, the suction pads that you use to lift floor tiles on raised floor data centers, yeah? Has anybody else done this with them, right? <laughs> Has it, right, brilliant, right? Oh, you're missing out, OK? You, you can probably, unless you're really strong, you can probably get most of the way up this wall. The problem that you have with them, though, is at least back in the day in these kind of computer rooms, they, they tend to have a fair amount of dust in there. And when you get so high, they start sliding down the wall, and they leave dirty gray marks on the wall. So the story gets worse. So we did this one day while we were doing a piece of um, work. It was probably on a weekend. The boss wasn't there. So we go and get a bucket and, wa and water and some cloths into the data center with a bucket of water <laughs> so that the boss can't see, right? Ridiculous. Anyway, um, when I'm this junior IT guy, we had this problem. 
um, where one of our netware servers went down, it was a logon server and we had an in-house application on an HP 3000 that actually offloaded some of the um, logon calls, I guess, to this netware server. It went down, my boss was a bit of a netware expert, he couldn't figure it out, we called up our partner, um, they sent their top guy on site, comes on site, briefcase, everything. The company's not in business at the time while this is all going on. Um, do you remember, so in, in like a server rack, you, you used to have like a, a, a keyboard and um, video and mouse console that you'd pull out, you'd flip up the screen, it was attached to a KVM at the back, yeah? Well, so we had um, one of those in a rack over there and the guy was working on this rack here. And he'd been working on it for a while and we had coffees on it, we had muffins on it, the lot, right? So here we are working on this problem, um, potentially gonna make a bigger disaster because we've all got food and drink in the data center. The general manager of the company, of course, she's got a badge that lets her in every freaking room in the business, right? So she walks in and we're like, oh. and I'm the junior guy, right? So I have to stand there so that she can't see that we've got drinks and food in the data center. But the, the point is, right, she waltzes into the room and I remember, right, it's a small number now, but at the time, I was, it was my first IT job, right? She'd estimated we were losing 20,000 pounds an hour. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, 20,000 pounds an hour. And I was like, I was feeling the stress for my boss, okay? What's going on, all of this? So why have I told you these three stories, right? Well, okay, so, the general manager, a lady called Steph Wilson, right? Um, she'll never watch it, but if she is, hello, Steph. Um, lovely lady, but she had a real sense of um, assurance that she could walk into that data center and stand in front of those servers, and she could watch over our shoulder while, you know, giving us extra pressure like you do while we're trying to fix something. But she really felt secure that the data center was on site, she was four floors above it, she could go in any time she wanted, she would, she'd come around and make sure that we weren't stacking PCs on the floor like he used to do and everything, right? That there weren't boxes everywhere, that we wiped up the pigeon crap from there. Yeah, she had a sense of security, okay? And that sense of security is obviously taken away from you by the cloud. Now. A lot of people are kind of afraid of the cloud because you just, you can't rock up at Amazon Web Services, swipe your pass on the door and go in, pull out a console, whack a coffee down next to it, and you can't do that, right? And it's quite scary for some people, but ultimately, right, I think forever we've been on a journey towards cloud and things like Amazon Web Services and Azure, right? The evolution of the data center, right? It's a crap picture and it's small. But we've all had comms rooms like that. In fact, you know, I thought stuff like that was really cool when I got my first IT job. Look at all the cables. And it genuinely, in my first job, the patch room on the fourth floor looked like that, okay? On the third floor, though, we fitted out, and this is the one where we had the pigeon come in, okay? We fitted out three rows of racks, okay? And we had an HP 3000 in the corner. And this was like, we, we'd, show clients, we'd show clients around it, right? I remember, she's my wife now, but I was dating her at the time, um, and I was trying to impress her with how cool my job was. I brought her in, um, like one Friday night, I think we were out in town, the, the office block was in town. I, I took her into the computer room, and I flicked the lights out. It's nothing dodgy, okay? <laughs> but if you've ever been in a computer room with the lights out, you know that all the disk lights are flashing and the server lights are flashing, and I'm like, how cool am I, right? I mean, I'm kind of in charge of this. I was a junior guy, but you know what I mean, right? Anyway, so we moved away from that. This was kind of like, this was better, but like I say, we took coffees and stuff in all the time. The, the next step was to, um, well, I guess it's two things really, but was to take the data center and the IT off site from where management were, from where, well, that was a call center I happened to work for at the time. And we actually built our own data center and it cost an arm and a leg to build. But it was the next step in professionalism, right? You're not allowed to take, we weren't allowed to take coffees and pizzas and stuff into that. And that was a shock to the system for me at first. What? Right? You were escorted off site if you took food and drink into there. 
Also, Steph, she was the general manager of the business, but her badge did not get her in. And I remember them being scared of that. But it is a, it's a step in the right direction, right? It's the right thing, because they shouldn't be going in there all the time. She's no business being in there. So I think, uh, and then, you know, we moved on to colos and stuff like that. And even me as an IT guy, um, even if I was a senior guy in IT at the company, at a colo site, if I didn't fill out the forms two days in advance, they weren't even going to let me on site. And I was like the boss. The next step for me, just logically, is the cloud, right? And I know it's a little bit scary because it's so totally different to this. But just a show of hands, right? Is there anybody in the room that would want their IT to go back to this? It was fun, right? We played football up against an EMC Symmetrics once and we climbed the walls, right? But you really, you don't want to go back to that. So what I think we're witnessing is the evolution of the data center, right? Now, I'm going to draw a quick data center architecture for you here. And I think everybody is totally cool with this, right? But you build a data center and you build some networks in it, OK? And we've all got a VM first approach, right? So we all lash up a few virtual machines. We've got applications. We've probably still got some physical stuff in there, right? You've got some big iron Unix or whatever, or one or two niche physical requirements. Um, you throw some security policies and stuff in place, and suddenly you think, you know what? We've got a good thing going here. You think, it's the crux of our business now. No IT, no business. We probably ought to build another one. But you know what? That thing cost an arm and a leg to build. Capital expenditure. We need to pretty much put everything else the same over there. And then we need a whopping network connection in between. But you know what? Failing stuff over from here to here is a nightmare, OK? We run out of money. We actually decide we want twin tail data centers. We want redundancy between sites. But we can't afford another link like that. So we lash a piece of string across, OK? We need uh, internet connections out to the real world. We're all cool and comfortable with that. That's like the standard model for us, OK? You can't do that in the cloud, though, right? Well, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. You totally can do that in the cloud, right? But I remember when Amazon Web Services was quite new, and EC2 was like, it was the chizing, OK? But what kind of IP address can you assign to EC2 instance? going on there we don't really know what's going on we have no control over that what kind of security can you apply back in the day when Amazon Web Services was new it was a bit of a scary thing but now right in Amazon Web Services I can lash up an availability zone right well <laughs> availability zones already exist these are Amazon's data centers right I've never been to one but I think we can all agree Amazon knows how to build data centers these things are world class, OK? Redundant power, the lot, OK? Build networks, we can throw up instances. These can even be, you can rent, you can rent physical hardware from Amazon now if you've got deep enough pockets. Um, we can lash security groups around it. You know what? We need a second one. We just put our DR in another availability zone. It's already built for us by Amazon. How much does it cost to go from that to that? It's an OPEX cost, right? We've got double the number of virtual machines running. Um, it's going to be whatever it costs us to spin up our EC2 instances. It, it's pennies at the end of the day, right? We can add the equivalent of firewall rules, network access control lists, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so security groups, oh, I'm going to get this the wrong way around, right? But their um, security groups are stateful. Network access control lists are stateless. If you care about the two, you can, you, know, you can pick. You can go with both. You can combine them. We all know that from a security perspective, right, we want to go with as many layers as possible. You've got rock solid security here. Can I get a show of hands in the room, right? Anybody know a security person that's better than the security guys that work at Amazon? Nobody's going to show their hands, right? Because this is Amazon's business. They pay and hire the best. And I'll give you it, right? They work them to death. But these guys know the score. These are like experts, right? If you think you can do security better than Amazon, I'm going to doubt you. Now, you might have more um, options in security if you're not deploying into the cloud. 
You are kidding me. Okay, right, we're going to rattle through. Um, but the thing is, Amazon do this stuff. It's their bread and butter, and they are good at it. And the links that they have between availability zones, if you're within a single Amazon region, oh my goodness, these things are like lightning. And to throw together an internet connection, this thing is like Amazon, they don't give you the details behind it, but they tell you it's never going to go down. It is never going to be a, um, a choking point from a performance perspective. It's like the Mac Daddy of internet connections, right? Does it, do the two look kind of similar? They look pretty similar to me. So I've only got a few minutes left. Uh, excuse me. Right, so do you like his tattoo? <laughs> I don't think anybody else has a naked man's butt in their presentation. I was going to tell you a story, because I like stories, but I haven't got time for it now, right? Um, I, want, I want a bit of time for questions, right? Um, so you know what? If if you still think you're not ready for production in the cloud, I would say seriously consider at least dev test in the cloud. And um, just go give it a try. Because you know what? Even if your company is not ready for it now, they might be next month. Or your next latest, greatest job might want somebody that can do this stuff. So for your company and for your own career, get cracking on it. All right, no questions. Well, we're good then. Thank you, everybody. That'll do.